<clears throat> All right, Alex. Well, we've both seen one of the most anticipated films of the summer, at least in my book, Super 8. Absolutely. And I got to say, there's something iconic and pretty thrilling about seeing the logos come up on the screen. Yeah. You know, you got the Amblin Entertainment and then Bad Robot. Yeah, you get the applause for both of those when the both of them came up, so it was pretty, pretty cool to see. So, we've already got these great expectations, and uh, having seen it, I'll say that uh, I really enjoyed the film. It was thrilling and exciting, and it had some moments of visual poetry, but I also have some uh, issues with it. Mm -hmm. It's pretty much the same. I. I you know, J.J. Abrams has is the man of the moment uh, in Hollywood. He is, he's behind Lost and behind Star Trek a couple years back, and, and of course, teaming up with Spielberg just seems like it's a can't-miss proposition. And so when I do have the issues, I, I almost think, seem, think to myself, should I have these issues? Am I, am, I, am I just overthinking these things? Well, what I did like was the kids, the interaction. It's, it's a story that's told from... Uh, you know, teenage, pre-teenage kids' point of view, middle schoolers, let's say. And um, the main characters are trying to, this is 1979, and the main characters are trying to make a, a Super 8 film. One of the exciting scenes in the film really is the best train crash I've ever seen put on <laughs> film. It, it's Better just, than The Fugitive, huh? I think so. I mean, <laughs> I'll have to go back and watch The Fugitive. That's right. But really uh, exciting and nail-biting and, you know, rail cars flying over your head and crashing and stuff. Um, that was a great scene. And, and the other scene that really I remember now, uh, thinking back in the film, was the very first shot mm -hmm. where they're in the factory. There's a sign that says 768 days since last accident. It's an mm -hmm. industrial plant. Mm -hmm. And you see a guy in a, in a crane going up there, and he's removing the numbers and putting up a one. Yeah, you don't even have to know what, what happened. and Everything that is said is with the removal of, of those numbers. And, Very uh, well done. Yeah. And, and to me, um, after those incidents, I'm not going to say it degenerates, but the whole thing it never reaches that level for me again because of the creature. Uh, I have issues with the, the monster in the movie and uh, you know I don't want to say too much but it's almost and, and you said it earlier they're trying to have it both ways. They're having they're trying to make it an E.T. friendly kid show and they're also trying to give you this creep out you know, terrible monster thing. And, and that's the, the blending of, uh, of Abrams and, and Spielberg. I think I, you, it seems obvious that those are the two coming together, that Abrams ha does have the, the past where he has, I mean, did he do, Clo or was he involved in Cloverfield? Or uh, Yeah, he was producer. He was producer on Cloverfield, that's right. So, it, you know, it's kind of, to me, it almost felt like that, that it was a, Spielberg was throwing in the E.T. influence, and then Abrams bringing in the Cloverfield kind of monster-ish uh, part. And the, the ending was, you know, a nod to Close Encounters, I guess, or you, you could say a number of different things, but it didn't have the spectacle that I expected it to. I do think it, it, it's worth seeing. I mean, it, it's, it's worth uh, going in and discovering what, what exactly the monster is and mm -hmm. how, these, uh, how these kids are involved. What did strike me was how interesting a character, the Elle Fanning character is, mm -hmm. the, the little girl, uh, the young girl. She's a beautiful girl. She's like, in middle school, she would be the unobtainium of <laughs> girlfriends. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, I can relate. When I was that age, I had a girl in, in my school. Uh, and I won't mention any names, but it's CT, you know who you are. Um, so having said all that, uh, I definitely recommend the film. Um, it, it's one of the films that, as you're watching it, it's thrilling and you go along with it. And it's only afterwards, and, and very quickly afterwards, in my case, you start going, wait a minute. Does you that know? all add up? <laughs> yeah, yeah. There are some definite plot holes, and uh, particularly in relation to the uh, the monster, the creature. And I, I think it, it may be one of those that, that, upon second viewing, you may understand a little bit more now that you don't have to, f to understand the story going in. Uh, you can you can say, oh yes, I see where this connects early on, whereas maybe the first time around you don't see it. And I, I hope that's the case at least. The other thing I want to say is I was really pleased to see Kyle Chandler uh, get a lead role. Mm -hmm. uh, one of my favorite actors from Friday Night Lights, and uh, he just does a fabulous job. 
He needs more lead roles in movies. Absolutely, I agree.